this transforms these uh, Hornby X Daypole X Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 21 pugs into a very usable machine on DCC. Hi there everyone, welcome back up here to the loft with me Jenny Kirk here in Weir Yard and today I'm doing a how-to guide and this is something that I keep getting asked about and it is hard DCC wiring older locomotives that are not DCC ready and can actually prove a little bit of a challenge to uh, to some people if they're not really confident with hard wiring a locomotive and this particular one it's been a popular stalwart in the Hornby and before then the Daypole catalogue for a great number of years. The model itself actually dates back to the 1980s. It's still a popular model. It's still in Hornby's range with new iterations in both BR Black as 51207 and also uh, LMS Black as well. But um, they prove a bit of a challenge on DCC. So with the aid of today's sponsor of this video, Trainomatic, manufacturers of DCC decoders and accessories designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, they've sent over some uh, pretty useful bits of kit. So I've got here one of their eight pin decoders and I'm going to be hardwiring that into the locomotive. But that's not all. One of the other things that I want to uh, try is a smart power pack and their decoders are fully compatible with these. These are their own smart power packs and they act pretty much as a stay alive. But they are programmable and, um, and what it means is you can have the locomotive running for up to around four seconds without actually needing a power source. So when it goes over uh, a dead spot in the track or loses contact for whatever reason, this should keep it going. So that's today's plan. And uh, a big, big thank you to Trainomatic for sending these over. So I'm going to have a go at hard DCC fitting one of these locomotives. And then we're going to see how that performance can be radically improved with the application of a smart power pack. So come with me and... Let's see what we can do. So this locomotive is one of the Hornby X Daypole X L and Y pugs. Now it is one of my favourite locomotives. I've loved these for a great long time and as I've gone DCC they've kind of become a little bit sidelined because of not being DCC ready. Now as a proof of concept I hardwired this particular example some time ago. This is 51231 in uh, factory weathered early BR Cycling Lion livery and uh, what I actually used was the Hornby 4 pin decoder of the type that they normally sell for the W4 packets and the Sentinels. Now I have to stress there is absolutely nothing wrong with these decoders. They are great for hard wiring a lot of locomotives because of their small size and the fact that they only have the four pins that you need. However, there's no real provision to fit uh, any kind of a stay alive or a smart power pack. And what that means, well, I'll show you. So I've got this queued up already on my um, Gauge Master controller and we've got 5131 there. So I'm going to start it running. And as you can see, it's really jerky. And there, it's stalled, not because I've stopped it, but simply because it's lost contact with the track. So if I now give that a little bit of a push, you can see it's trying to move. Um, but this locomotive, the issues that it has is essentially it is quite light. Um, being a very small locomotive, it just struggles to get a good contact with the track. It's a short wheelbase, four wheeled chassis. That too doesn't really help it. It's also got a very high geared motor with no flywheel. So when it encounters a dead spot, it literally does 
just stop absolutely dead. So I'm going to give that another push and you can see it's trying very hard. But what this says to me is actually if we use the Trainomatic DCC decoder with the Smart Power Pack then we're going to stand a much greater chance again this locomotive to not only run on DCC but to run reliably. And my aim today is to transform one of these locomotives to do just that. So what I've got here is, it's actually my very first ever locomotive that I bought. It's 51222 from uh, probably about 2000, but the design on these locomotives hasn't changed. So if you buy a current range uh, Hornby X LMY plug, it is exactly the same mechanically inside. And this is going to be our guinea pig locomotive to try and fit that smart power pack from Trainomatic and just see what kind of an effect we're going to get. So you've seen with this example just what a plain hardwired DCC fitting will do. And there, as you can see, it just really isn't reliable or usable. So we're going to put this to one side and we're going to get to work on this. So first of all, let's take a look at the inner workings of this locomotive. The cab itself is held on by two clips either side plus a further one at the back. So we just gently squeeze in and lift and that entire cab assembly comes off in one neat piece. And then what you can see in there is that we've got the connections to the motor on the top and then we've also got these connections up from the pickups. So it's really, really simple. There's not really a lot in here at all. This um, capacitor or transistor, whatever this is, that's going to go. Don't worry about that. We're going to get rid of that. But then effectively we're going to have to fit within this space inside the cab the entire gubbins of the smart power pack and decoder. One of the other things first I'm going to show you as well is this is the one that's hardwired. So if I take the cab off very carefully there, um, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky to get it past uh, the driver figure. Uh, I'm going to take him out and you can see that there is room inside the cab for a decoder but we're going to have to be a little bit careful just how we fit all these together but there is proof it can be done and it's fairly unobtrusive once you get the actual cab back on we can disguise that with some crew figures and uh, away we go so I've got my Trainomatic uh, smart power packs here if these prove too big Trainomatic do also do a smaller version. This is intended for N-gauge primarily, but it does mean that you can see there we've got that much smaller form factor. Um, so I'm going to see which of these two works best to fit within those confines. We can disguise them afterwards um, using some maybe black coloured card just to obscure the electronics. So when you look in through the side, you're not going to see that. And you can see as well that once upon a time, I fitted a locomotive crew, well, at least one crew member in this. And these also, I take him off. We're going to keep him to one side. That's our engine driver. And the idea is that we can use him as well to obscure any of the electronics. So put him safely to one side and let's get to it. This is the chip that uh, I've chosen for this, and this is the Trainomatic 8-pin decoder. You can see it comes on uh, a set of fly leads that lead to the 8-pin plug down there. It's standard NMRA wiring, so what we're going to do is we're going to trim off the plug, trim back the wires to just the length that we need it, and we only need four of these wires. So we need the two wires that go to the pickups, and the two wires that go to the actual motor. Uh, but uh, before we do that, what I actually want to do is put this aside and I'm going to wire the smart power pack to this as a test that everything is up and running. And then what I can do is I can plug the 8-pin decoder socket into a regular locomotive 
and just make sure that that smart power pack is soldered in properly and all working before we start working on that. And I think that is the important way to go. So you can see on the back there that we've got these little solder tabs and it's these three at the bottom that we're going to be soldering the smart power pack to. So I'm going to bring in the smart power pack here and you can see it comes with three sets of wires and these are colour coded white, red and black and on the uh, Trainomatic website it gives you the full wiring diagram for uh, where you need to solder these two. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, first things first I'm going to tin those little tabs on there. You've got to do this really carefully because you don't want to bridge the solder across those otherwise the chip will just stop working. It, all is not lost if you accidentally do that. Uh, all you need to do is clean off the solder and the chip should be just fine. But it's just something to watch out for. Once we've tinned those three tabs there then I'm going to trim the wires on the smart power pack to length, tin them up too and then it's just a case of very very carefully soldering them to the tabs on the decoder. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it's not something that's going to be easy for me to film and solder at the same time but I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the end result. So one of the first things that I've done you can just see there that I've removed the heat shielding over the three tabs that we're going to need to solder to. It's okay to just remove it in that small area, leave it intact on the rest of the chip to protect various things. Just use a very sharp craft knife, something like that. Don't cut too deeply. You don't want to cut into the actual decoder itself because you might run the risk of severing some of these copper tracks. But it's quite easy to do and then you just peel the unwanted piece off and that exposes those tabs ready for tinning with solder. So they're now tinned, just a very, very thin layer of solder, making sure that you don't bridge any of those gaps in between. Otherwise, as I said before, you'll find that the chip stops responding. can be revived if you do that by removing the solder, but really you'd just be making work for yourself. Now we've also tinned the ends of the wires, trimmed them first, tinned them up, and then following the guide on the Trainomatic website, we're going to now very carefully solder each of those to these tabs. I would recommend start at one end and move along one at a time, whichever way is easier for you. If you leave the middle one till last, you're just going to run the risk of unsoldering the others as you do it. You don't need to apply too much heat because that's tinned, because these are tinned, you'll probably find they'll just instantly stick. Whatever you do, don't keep applying heat, otherwise you might run the risk of overheating the decoder. And the end result you're going to get is there, like that. Now my soldering's not the neatest, but it gets the job done. So the next step is, we've still got the 8-pin plug on this decoder, and this is going to be the easiest way to test that everything is okay. So what I actually have for this job is uh, I have an old 8-pin chassis here. This is actually off a Helgen Class 17. It's a known working chassis. And I can just plug this in and test it on the layout. And that will tell us that the smart power pack is all set up as it should be. So I'm going to go ahead now and let's get this tested. So we've got the setup here and you can see the uh, chips just hanging off there. And that's fine. So what we're going to do is up on here, we're going to go to the program track. We're going to read the address. And this should be the default of three if we've got everything right. So just give it a moment to uh, have a think about that. And there we are, loco number three. And that hopefully means that we've got that soldering all set up just right. Now, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, program that um, smart power pack and uh, let's just uh, go through we want CV settings and uh, then it asks us for which CV number that we want so what we want to do is now set the amount of time that it will keep on rolling for and that's set from CV 1, 2, 3 enter there and data we want 255 for the maximum so um, let's put that in sending that to the chip and there we go 
One other important thing to remember is that CV29 needs to be set to 10, otherwise the smart power pack will not work. We can also at this point set up the start delay and uh, that's on CV124 and this actually gives us the startup delay in seconds. So on this one I'm going to set it to one second and what that actually means is that uh, one second after the chip starts receiving power it will start to charge that smart power pack. So let's get this on the main track and uh, let's get it tested and running and just make sure that that smart power pack is delivering that extra charge. So I've got it on the track and I've actually programmed it up with the number which is going to be uh, for the final locomotive that this is going in rather than this test locomotive. I've done that simply because it was easy enough to do whilst I was changing CV123 for the uh, length of time it's going to try and run this locomotive for once the power is interrupted and also CV124 which is the time delay on startup I've changed that to two seconds so I'm going to get that running just quite slowly so we can see it starts to move and let's just see if we can get in on those flywheels it should be charged now so lift it off the track and you can see it continues running this is a very power hungry chassis it has to be said which is why it's such a good test bed for uh, DCC decoders but you can see that, that kept trying to run so what we know is that the smart power pack is all working so what we can do now is we can pair back these wires and we only need four of these to solder to the uh, X, L and Y pug. So now that I'm happy that this decoder and the smart power pack is all working, I can do that. And the reason I do this with this test chassis is simply because this tells us that that is absolutely fine, the soldering there. Once I'm happy all this is working, I don't have to worry. If we get another problem in the new locomotive it's going into, it can be diagnosed as a fault with the soldering where I sold it to the existing contacts in that locomotive. And it just, it just helps with fault finding. The only wires that we need on this is uh, orange and grey, they connect to the motor, and red and black, they go to the track. And uh, so everything else, we can trim those wires right back if we need to, if uh, space is going to be an issue. So I'm going to get on, I'm going to get them ready. And then, of course, as well, we're going to prep the locomotive. And uh, the easiest way to do this is I'm going to unsolder to those tabs at the top. Um, and then the, the wires that we need to go to the motor can just solder straight onto there, nice and neat. And then uh, I will have to solder to these wires and we use a little bit of uh, black tape just to uh, cover up the solder to make sure it doesn't uh, short out on anything. And then we're going to try and get it all fitted into that cab. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, unsolder those contacts, get the uh, new wires soldered in there. And then we'll test it. And then once it's tested, it's working, then we can start thinking about how to get all of this to fit into the cab. So here we are. We've got uh, those contacts all soldered off. So we're pretty much ready to go there. Um, so red and black go to the track. Orange and grey power the day. Well, that's how I'm remembering it. Um, there's probably a good um, a rhyme to help you remember, but that's that's how I'm doing it. So without further ado, let's get it all soldered on and then we can test that this locomotive actually does run tons better than the straight DCC chipped one that I showed you earlier on. So I've got it on the test track now and the reason for this is that if we've made a mistake uh, testing it out on the test track, um, it's not going to run the risk of damaging the, uh, the processor on there. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up read on the programming track and this is just a really good way of just making sure that this comes back as the um, ID number that we were expecting. So um, hopefully it should come up as 5122 and there it is, 5122. So the fact that it's read that back okay hopefully now means that we're good to test this on the track proper. So I've got it on the track and got it uh, selected. So let's give it a little bit of power and just see how it does. Well, that's actually a lot better than the other one did. 
you can see there it's crawling along. I mean, it's dragging <laughs> all that wiring, but it's okay. We're going to fix that, and uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of power in the opposite direction. I'm just going to hold that up so that we don't get any issues, and then, as you can see, it just keeps rolling. So that's perfect. Now we know that this works, it works reliably, and you can see the difference that this smart power pack is making. So the next step now is we're going to neaten all that up in the cab, get the cab back on, and then we're going to take it for a spin and just see how well it does compared with the uh, other one over there that's just a straight DCC decoder. So we've got it all together now and uh, got the cab back on. Now that was a really tight fit, but as you can see, it does fit, just you have to be very careful how you put that smart power pack and the uh, decoder in. It's just a case of trial and error. Take note of the shape of both and the shape of the space that it has to go into. Believe me, it's like playing Tetris, but I got it in there in the end, and well, just look at the difference. A little bit of power and away that locomotive goes at a crawl. Now if you remember the other locomotive which is just a straight DCC decoder really struggled. Um, it was stopping at every possible opportunity because it really just didn't have the momentum or the electrical continuity. So I'm going to lift this off the track and you can see that it's just chugging on and that is exactly what we want. Put it on the track and it picks up power immediately and away it goes. This transforms these uh, Hornby x Daypole uh, X Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 21 pugs into a very usable machine on DCC. I mean the difference is just, uh, well it's catastrophic, it goes from unusable to very usable. So I'm incredibly pleased with uh, what these smart power packs from Trainomatic have done for this locomotive. Finally, my favourite locomotive is DCC enabled and boy does it run well. Well if we get down low you can see there the one on the left is uh, just a plain straight DCC fitted, uh, does struggle. The one on the right, uh, the clip on the cab has um, actually pinged off. So that's not because it's overstuffed that the front of the cab is up in the air a little bit. I'm just going to use a little dab of super glue and um, I'm going to get that stuck back down. You can see though that there's no uh, light visible through the cab. I've used black tape to kind of hide the electronics and make them not quite so uh, garish. I'm going to see if I can fit that driver in as well just to... Uh, kind of pull the eye away from the, the blackness that's in there, but I think that's a small price to pay for having a DCC ready X Lancashire and Yorkshire pug. Well I hope this video has been really informative to you and I hope you've enjoyed as much as I have in seeing this venerable old locomotive gain a new lease of life. As I said before they are still available from Hornby brand new and we've put a couple of affiliate links down below for you to pick up the latest examples. Also, you'll see the links to our sponsor, Trainomatic, down there, where you can also purchase the Smart Power Pack and the 8-pin DCC decoder that you see here that we used in this conversion. So from me, Jenny Kirk, up here in Weir Yard, it's a big, big thank you. It's been great having your company through this. I hope this project has been helpful to you. Don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel. And you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, thanks for watching. Take great care of yourself. Bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. But a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, ooorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, and Helen Sink. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.